Welcome everybody to video three of Be an Innovator with Flow. So if you're joining us new, we are going step by step to build an automated business process from start to finish with Flow Builder. So watch these videos one after the other, share your progress online and get a chance to win some fun prizes. All right, so in video two, we took pen to paper and mapped out our business process. In video three, we're gonna take a look at Flow Builder, this amazing tool and what it can offer. We're gonna take also a look at how it's different from other automation tools within Salesforce. And lastly, of course, how we can leverage this to solve for our business case. So I'm super excited to hear from admin evangelist, Mark Basemond, and special guest, um, product manager of Flow, Shannon Hale, about how we can use Flow Builder to build some automated solutions. Let's hear from them. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay, so we've got our flow. We know exactly what's gonna happen and we've chosen to use the automation tool flow. So I'm joined today by Shannon Hale, product manager of the new flow. Shannon, tell us a little bit about the new flow and what admins need to know. Well, Flow Builder is our new tool for creating process automation for Salesforce. It's got a lot of the same functionality that you had in the old Flow Builder, but it's faster. It's a little bit easier to understand. It's got much better visual design, so it's easier to see what you're doing and, and what different pieces you're interacting with. We think it's a much better way to build flows. It sounds fantastic. So when admins are first starting on their flow journey, if you will, what are some of the things that they should look out for or learn? Well, I think the, the biggest challenge for admins is that a lot of the other tools that we have are very closely tied to the object, the yes object, right? So when you're in the page layout editor, you drag fields from a specific object onto the page and everything else is handled magically for you. We know what the data type is because you've already created them on the, on the, on the object. With Flow, you're gonna create screens that have fields on them, but the fields are really more the data type and you, do, you then have to tie those back to the object or other things because you can actually put them, uh, you can associate with them, them with other types of uh, data. So you don't necessarily just drag the phone field, on, like the account.phone field onto the page. You're actually going to drag a phone field onto the page and then you need to actually get the information about the account, what the phone number is, and you store that in what's called a variable. Okay. And so we have this concept of resources and vari variables are a type of resource and you might have to go off and get the account record and then tie and, and then get the data from the account record and then you would basically you drag the phone a phone type field onto the page and then you go in and configure it so it's actually pointing back to the account variable to the account phone variable so i can build a screen with something that's not connected to any underlying object and then what i'll do is i'll go and use those variables to actually connect them to the underlying data that lives in a Salesforce object. Yeah, exactly. And this can be super powerful because you can actually get data in other formats and then do stuff with it in a formula behind the scenes and then put that into the S object and store it in the database later. So you don't necessarily have to have every field exactly the same way that you normally see it on a page layout. It's a bit more of an advanced topic, but it does give you a lot of power. Can you tell me a little bit more about what resources are in general? Sure, a resource is it's kind of an abstract concept for um, the different types of things you can use in a flow. So variables, for example, are a type of resource. A variable is just a bucket that you can store something in and carry it around from screen to screen. And you can actually um, use the same variable in multiple screens, and if it changes in one screen, then in other screens it will be like the new value. Um, we have other resources for things like text templates, which allow you to create sort of a uh, um, kind of like when you create an email template and you have merge mm. fields and other things so you could create something that looks a little bit different than a typical my value um, and then you can use that in different places uh, we have formulas sure. which we we all know about we've used in other other places um, and then uh, the other big one is for pick lists and for record choice record choices we have different ways that we can represent um, choice data. In, in Salesforce, most often it's pick list, but sometimes you want to actually put it as radio buttons, or sometimes you want to put it as checkboxes. Sometimes you actually want to list a list of records as checkboxes, sure. and not actually a pick list at all. 
Um, and those are all things that you can do with the various record choice uh, resources. Awesome. Okay, so now Leanne is going to take us through building the first part of our flow, which is going to be the screen, that user interface piece that we talked about, so folks can enter their project feedback. Over to you, Leanne. Awesome. So let's take a look at how we can start building our flow. So we're in our environment. So we're in our Sunshine Chocolates environment. Again, you can be doing this in your sandbox, in your uh, developer environment, in wherever you wanted to collect information and build a flow screen. So we are in our home environment or in our Sunshine Chocolates environment. And we're going to go to setup. And in setup, we're going to go to flows. And we did already see our beautiful new flow experience. Um, that Shannon and Mark talked through. So again, this is our canvas, and then on the left we have our toolbox with our elements and our manager. So as Shannon said, elements are the things that we do in Flow. And what we're gonna do first is add our screen. And so that's in our elements area, we've got a screen element, and this is that user interface. So when we drag screen onto the canvas, we have our new screen uh, view here, and we've got kind of a mini canvas for how we're building this screen. It gives us some visual feedback on what we're adding. On the left, we have all of our screen components. So these are all of the things we can add to our screen. So we've got a whole selection of input components. So these are things that we can add to the screen that the users would engage with, that they would select values on or enter information on. And at the bottom, we have display text. And this is just what it sounds like. It's how you would kind of add additional information to the screen that's not necessarily working with uh, data or, or variables. Your user's not gonna enter information there. On the right, we've got our properties. So this is the properties of the entire screen and, and as we go through it'll be where we can reflect the properties for the different uh, components or elements that we're working with. So first we want to name our screen. So we're going to label this and we will call this uh, feedback screen. So we've named this our feedback screen. We've got the uh, description here and below we've got options to show header or show footer and also to control navigation. So we'll come back to that area, but that's everything that's contained in the screen properties. Now we're ready to start bringing on information to the screen or bringing on um, you know, what we want the screen to look and feel like. So first let's bring on some display text. The display text allows us to um, add additional information, additional notes, sort of like help text, but you don't have to hover for it, right? So it's a great way to um, provide extra information to your users. So we'll call this feedback display text, that's our API name, and then below we can insert a resource, so this is where if we had any resources we had created like with merge fields, things like that, um, or templates, we would add that here, but we can also just add our text right here. So we want to say, please share any information around this project. Great. So once we click away from that, we've got our display text, a little preview here that it's showing us. Now let's get some more information. So we, when we created our feedback object, we've got the details field, and this is where we want to choose how we're kind of collecting that information. So that details field was a text field, and we want to capture that in a text field here. So we'll call this the details, and API name details, and we don't need any additional validations or um, kind of uh, specifications here. Now we want to have this feedback define whether or not it needs to be escalated. So we're going to pick an input field that provides us with that kind of requires escalation. And one of the things that's important to think about here is you've got a lot more kind of field types, input type options here, right, on the, on the left. Um, so we've got checkboxes, we've got um, radio buttons and sliders. So you don't have to do a one-to-one -one reflection on exactly how those fields are reflected in Salesforce. You can define, you know, how do you want to collect that information in a way that's friendly to your user, and then you can, you know, map it to how you're tracking it in Salesforce. So instead of a pick list for escalation, we're going to do a checkbox here. And we're going to call this requires escalation. There we go. Now we also had a rating field. So the rating field was a pick list on our feedback object that had a um, uh, option of one to five. And so we have a number of different kind of ways we can surface that to our users. And we're gonna do that with a radio button. So this is something we can't do in your core objects or in your objects, but you can do it here. So we're gonna call this rating. 
in the API name reading, and the data type will be text. And this is where we get to what the choices are, right? So we have to be able to define what are the choices that are gonna be kind of made available here when they're clicking through. It's gonna be a bunch of different values for radio buttons. So we're gonna actually create a new resource. So this is where we're using resources to collect information from our Salesforce environment that we can surface elsewhere in our flow. So the resource that we're going to create is going to be a um, choice resource. So we'll call this a pick list choice set. And we will call this rating choice set. And this is because it's a pick list choice set. It's saying we can look at objects in our Salesforce environment and we can select that object and we can select which field we want to bring in the values of. And so this is nice. What this means is if you're working with like picklist, for example, in your Salesforce environment, you can say, I want this flow to always kind of reflect those picklist values so that when you update maybe your picklist values um, for something, you don't have to go back. It's not hard coded into your flow in that way that you have to go back and then also add that. You know, if we wanted to add six as a value, instead of having one through five, we wanted one through six as our rating options. We don't have to go back into our flow and say, okay, we have to add six as an option. It'll automatically pull that in from what is available on the pick list values. So I've selected my project feedback object, data type pick list, and I can see I've got my two pick lists available so I can pull in that rating. And I can say if I want it to be, you know, the default order of the field or ascending or descending. Awesome, so I click done there. And now I have that option to add that resource pick list choice set as the choices that should be available on that screen. Great, so I click done. Now, when I am on uh, my canvas again, I've got my feedback screen, but it's not connected to anything. So I haven't defined my start value. So I drag the little uh, circle from the start and I drag that connector over to the feedback screen. So now I've said, this is the first element in my flow. This is the first place that we are um, going in this flow. So let's go ahead and save this. So we're gonna pick our project label, collect project feedback from users, give our API name. And this is again where it's great to add a good description so you know why you built something and people who come and, and are looking at these flows know uh, what it is. So here we have the types. So Shannon and Rick talked about the different types of flows and we talked about when we think about different automation options. So here's where we have to select the type of flow. Now this experience actually will change a little bit. Um, in the future with flow, you'll be defining the type of flow that you want it to be at the beginning of your builder experience, but it's the same uh, kind of fundamental logic. You have to decide, is this a flow that we're going to launch from a process or from Apex, or is this a flow that we're going to launch with a kind of a screen, a user interaction, a screen experience? So because those are the two kinds of flows you'll be working with most often as you get started with flow. So the two flows, um, we've got auto launched and screen flow. Well, this is a screen flow, right? We want this to be surfaced as a screen flow. And so we're gonna select screen flow and click save. I do get the warning, review these issues. This is very handy to always look at these warnings. And it says the feedback screen is not connected to anything. So this is something that we're gonna be working on next in our next video is how do we take those values and do more with them. Um, but for right now, we just wanna make sure that we kind of created our screen correctly and it looks how we want it to look. So we're gonna be okay with that and we're actually gonna click the debug button. So the debug button in Flow is a very useful tool you're gonna to be using a lot. Um, it allows you to run the flow and in this purpose, we're gonna be seeing it as kind of a preview. So we've got debug the flow. Um, we wanna run the latest version and we wanna show the details. Okay, great, let's go ahead and click run. So this is letting me on, know on the right this kind of flow interaction, the screen interaction, which is called an interview, this started. And then on the left, I can see, okay, more information here. I've got kind of my preview of that flow screen. So I've got that I'm collecting project feedback from users. I've got my display text. I can see my rating pulled in all those pick list values into those radio buttons. I've got my details and my nice checkbox for requires escalation. Awesome. So that we've completed kind of the first few steps of building our flow, uh, of building our screen, of defining some of that look and feel, and we ran the debugger to see um, how it's performing so far and to get a preview. So we look forward to seeing the um, snapshots of all of your awesome flow screens after you run this debug and get that preview of it. And we will be building more in the next video.
Awesome. Thanks so much, Leanne. That was great. So we've got our screen ready to go. And thank you, Shannon, for coming today to talk to us and tell us a little bit about the new Flow Builder. It's my pleasure. Thanks, cool. Mark. You bet. Back to you, Rebecca. Wow, that was a lot of great information. Thank you, Mark, Shannon, and Leanne, for taking us on a tour of Flow Builder and talking through our very first step in building, which is to create the screen. So to summarize my main key takeaways, and it was hard to come up with just three, uh, first, we know Flow Builder is this awesome tool for creating process automation in Salesforce, but it's also quite different from other tools that we're used to building with. Because instead of starting with our object and building out from there, in Flow Builder, we work with the data types and resources inside the flow and then choose how to tie them back to our Salesforce objects and fields. Secondly, there are two key types of flows to be aware of. There's the auto launched from a process flow, and then there's the screen flow from user interaction. And of course, we'll be focusing on the second type, um, the screen flow. Lastly, we learned a whole bunch of new terms, and one of them being variables. And variables are a type of resource to store data in. I really liked how Shannon described it as a bucket to store something in, and then you carry it around from screen to screen. All right, so now it's your turn. Share a screenshot of your flow screen after you run the debug. And then, of course, share it on Twitter using hashtag be an innovator to enter to win. All entries for video three must be completed and tweeted with hashtag be an innovator by midnight, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on April 25th. Restrictions apply, so see rules for details. And then join us for video four of Being an Innovator to learn how to create the records element, the second step in us building our flow. All right, see you next time. Yeah.